live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Barcelona for HP Discover 2014, the European edition of the Cube, HP Discover, extracting the signal noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, and uh, no better guest to help us extract that signal than Sargalai, Chief Operating Officer of the Cloud, of HP Cloud, and also SVP and GM of the new business unit, and NFB business unit. Sorry, welcome back, and uh, always love to have you on, get the raw data, get the truth, get the signal. Welcome back. It's great to be here as always. Um, we love having you on, very candid uh, conversations. It's always been great. Uh, but you've always been in the hot areas. You got your hands in all the good stuff. You uh, took over the cloud when it was a small little band of, of folks trying to rub nickels together to make the cloud work. Um, you built that out, operationalized, built that team. Now that's exploding and, and, and growing like crazy. It's blowing up, as they say, um, in a good way. Um, still got some work to do. We were critical of it this morning, but still, marching down the right path. We're on a good path. What's new now? You got NFV business unit that Bethany kicked off. Uh, she was previously the GM of the networking group, so you're the right guy for the job, obviously. So what's going on? What's going on in, in your world right now? Well, you know, like I said, at HP, um, we're, you know, we're doing a lot of things. Um, NFV is a big opportunity for us. Um, you know, network function virtualization is really all about the cloudification of what the telcos are doing. We can talk more about that. And, you know, I've done... 20, 25 years of networking, working with the service providers, built up the cloud, and so it's actually a great place for me to go build another thing at HP, uh, the same way I did in the cloud, because it's a good fit for the, the things that I bring. And a lot of the value there also is, is we do really need to bring the cloud, but you need a networking person to do that. So you gotta, you're kind of getting a reputation within the HP as a builder. Um, and you, you know, move fast, break stuff, which is okay, bull in a china shop, okay, and make things move. We heard from, um, you know, the, uh, the new executive at Convergent was first saying, hey, Meg wants to go faster. So you said that on theCUBE, Meg wants to go fast, she's committed to innovation. Um, what is the innovation around NFV? What's the big hot button there? Is it just the telco revenue opportunity? Is there some tech angle there? Is it all a cash opportunity? Well, I think the, the interesting thing about NFV, first of all, is like, why does NFV exist, right? So the, the, the thing you have to understand is the telcos have built a really good business and a really good infrastructure over the last 10, 15 years very resilient, uh, but it's not that flexible. It was built to keep the network up, not to provide fast services. And they've been very successful there. The challenge they have is that now they're living in a new world, you know, the world of the over-the-top providers, where most of the value was extracted out of the network by people running on top of them, providing services, and they can't really tap into it because their network is not flexible enough. And so they have to you know, move to those new technologies, right? If you want to compete against someone, first look at what they're doing. And these competitors were all born in the cloud. They're moving very fast, this is the Netflixes, this is the Amazons, Apples, and the stores. So what NFV is all about is really, hey, how do we get the telcos to be able to provide the same resiliency and capability they have today, but on top of newer technology, cloud-based technology, both from a hardware perspective, but also from a software perspective, so they can actually have a lot more agility. So really, when you think about NFV, I mean, it's almost like when we talked about cloud a few years ago, cost, you assume costs will be reduced, but the value is agility. If all you want to do is reduce costs, there's a lot of easier ways to do it than NFV. NFV is about agility. It's about the fact that your network needs to be programmable, that you should be able to roll out services very fast. And that will allow these uh, the, the, the service providers to you know to to provide much better services that are being valued. Right, providing voice or just providing a carrier, that's not that valuable anymore. Look at the market caps of the telcos versus the market caps of the OTTs. Right, so we got to help the telcos move to that space. Yeah, it's almost been like a guerrilla war for the young, nimble companies to be agile, build on top. You say over the top. Obviously, that's been over a decade of over the top. You know, started out small little apps, and then SMS, you start to see the trend, and then clearly it's just crushing it. all types of media, applications running on the top. So, okay, I'm a telco. What do I have to do to be more nimble? I mean, is it is it a rip and replace? Is it a migration? Is it pure tech? What's the disruptive enabler to get those guys back in the game? Because, quite frankly, Google, Amazon are competing with directly with the telco, so I don't see them providing 
sure. cloud services well, to, or maybe they will, who knows? I mean, that, it's a really good point. And I think the way you have to look at it is the same way you have to look at the cloud, right? The cloud was about building a flexible infrastructure that allows people to dream up of new services, not here's the magic service. So the first thing the telcos have to do, or the carriers have to do, is build an infrastructure that is flexible, that allows for very innovative activity that may not be done by them, it may be done by other players, but they can give them a service. I'll give you an example, right? I mean, Google would love to pay the telco if they could have some AT API that they could call inside the network to give them some more information. They can't, the telco doesn't have that. So the first thing the telco needs to do, right, is figure out, okay, how do I make my uh, network more service oriented? And, and that's really what NFE is about, right? They have to move to these cloud-based infrastructure that is more flexible. It's not about a silver bullet. It's about having flexibility and being able to do things quickly. Um, that's really what this is about. And so it's not, okay, I'm going to do this one special service. Um, now, the thing is, they have an install base, right? I mean, it's one of these things where people say, you know, you have an install base. That's the good news because you have revenue. The bad news is you can't just flip it on and flip it off. It's not a greenfield. The telcos know that. The good news for them is HP knows that very well, right? We're, we're normal. It's the same as what we did was the, you know, in the cloud, right? We have an installed base. And so it's a process, but they got to start somewhere. But they got a burning platform here because, um, you know, the cost per bid, the, the amount of money they can get for bid is getting lower and lower and lower. And the capacity requirements for them are getting higher and higher and higher. It's not sustainable. They have to be able to move up the stack. And the only way to do that is a more nimble infrastructure. So it's not a wholesale rip and replace, is it? A piece parts rip and replace, or is it building uh, a layer on top of the existing infrastructure? Can you yes, to all of those things. It so is, it okay. it, it, look, overall it's about making your network, uh, your network capability flexible. And so as over time, it's about moving away from monolithic systems. So if you have various, uh, you know, uh, elements like a DPI or a firewall, all those things should be running in a cloud somewhere. They shouldn't be in this monolithic thing. And the reason for that is a monolithic um, appliance, right, that gets innovated, what, every three years someone does a new appliance? And also it's very hard to enter that space, right? If there's a little startup, I mean, they have to spend a year just getting the hardware to be compliant. And so by moving this to a cloud infrastructure, you're now opening it up to a bunch of other folks to innovate there for the telco. In terms of how it is, it's going to be over time. You're not going to rip and replace, but you're going to start moving services over to that infrastructure. You're going to build your NFB infrastructure. You're going to build the layer that allows you to run those services from the network, and you're going to start moving different services. Now, how are you going to decide what to move? You're going to decide what to move based on what makes sense. There's certain things, there's no innovation, it doesn't matter. Like, if you have a big, big router, that may get moved to NFB one day, but how much value am I going to get? On the other hand, mobile services, uh, virtual, um, um, CPEs where you can move and give services much faster to your enterprise clients, those things you can move very quickly. So it's going to be a process. The biggest challenge actually that process is how do you manage all this while this is going on? Because you know the, the telcos have their OSS and VSS systems and they're like, I don't want to have two separate things. And we have a product actually called NFP Director that helps you do that because it provides sort of a wedge between them and allows you to manage the old and the new. So it's a, it's, it's going to, you know, it's an evolution, not a revolution, but you got to get going. So. I'm, I'm inferring from the tone of this conversation that a lot of this is coming, uh, but the, no, the, the the awareness from the telcos that they had to do something has been around for a long time. So where are we in terms of that migration to this new style of computing within telco? Well, again, I would say, again, the, the NFV is the tip of the sphere of them moving to these technologies. They're at various stages. I think Etsy came out two years ago with NFV, and you know the telco world sort of works based on that, where you have a standard to start with. And so Etsy came up with that, and that sort of was the, the spark that led the charge. And then since then, over the last few years, we've been doing a lot of trials. You know, this is how they work. In fact, we have over 20 POCs now with the different telcos, and we talk telcos, the top 25 that we're running. And I think this year has been the year where it says, yes, this actually works. It's not just standard, it's not just a, a thing, it works. I think the, the year coming, the 15, is where you're going to start to see real deployments of people doing things like virtual CPE. I mean, it's a no-brainer to do a virtual CPE. Uh, and they're going to start doing it. But this is going to take time. Like, this is the same as, I mean, you really have to think about this, and this is why coming from the cloud, you know, having been busy getting the enterprise in the cloud for the last few years, it helps. It's a similar journey. It's a cultural journey as well. I mean, they've built whole mechanisms of culture in order to keep the network up and how they do upgrades and all this stuff, which helped them. They had to do that. It's been very successful. Now, all of a sudden, you have to upgrade the network every few days. You think you're going to do that without changing culture? 
So it's a whole process they have to walk through. The good news is they know they have to do it. Uh, and we now have the technology to do it. Uh, but it's going to you know, it's gonna take some time. Do you buy the premise that they just have to be good enough? In other words, it's not likely that they're going to be as agile as the Greenfield guys. That's a moving target. Do they, because they have an install base, do they just have to be good They have to have them? certain areas. I mean, the, green, the Greenfields can't compete against them in certain areas anyways. I mean, they have a REITs and they have an ability to do things. They have leverage. So, right. you know, it's not like they have, to, they have to start in that process. They have a lot of assets. But they have to make a decision, right? They could decide, you know, a telco can either decide to say, you know what, we're going to go down the food chain and just be provider of dumb pipes. And, you know, we'll make a little thing on it and so forth. Our market cap will be low, but we can do that because it's sunken cost. Or they can say, no, I want to be a, a services. I want to be the services business. Um, they have a lot of leverage. They have customer contacts. They have a lot going for them. So I'm not concerned about that, but it's a question of getting on a journey. On the other hand, they have an installed base and they have an installed network that's got to get, got to keep on working. So the Greenfield guys at Netflix take a share of the TAM, obviously. Do you expect there'll be a big share shift within the telcos? In other words, the guys that move to NFV fastest are going to steal major share from the guys who don't, or is it? Because or is that not the case because I it's think, so I much think much? that's going to be geographic places. Yeah. There are there are areas that have, you know, I don't know if the FCC is listening, but there are areas where there's a lot of competition, like Europe, and there are areas where there's very little competition, like not Europe. <laughs> so I think, you know, if you look at Europe, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. They're very innovative, sure. right? Some of these guys are very innovative, and they're also branching out to, you know, parts of Eastern Europe and Africa. There's a lot going on over there. It could be big share so, shifts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in North America, it's a bit more stable, but there's people who, I mean, they're at and is very aggressive domain too. Uh, I think in North America, it's more going to be, okay, the share of the wallet, how does the share of wallet shift between the telcos and the OTTs? Yeah. Whereas in Europe, that's going to be true too, but there you will also see potential for, hey, I can roll out surface faster, I'm grabbing share. Yeah, so let's talk about the impact of OpenStack, because obviously there is a OpenStack angle. Paris event was here uh, in Europe, very telco oriented from what I heard. We weren't here, um, Cube didn't make the trip. Um, but what's the impact? I mean, is it an opportunity for OpenStack? Is it uh, going to slow it down? What's your take on it, and how does this impact the overall sure. OpenStack uh, ecosystem? Well, I think it's actually great for OpenStack, but I mean, you have to think, when you think about NFE, right, one of the core parts of NFE, I and mean, there's a whole Etsy model, we won't go into this right, because people might fall asleep, they're actually quite fascinating, maybe not for this audience, but in there is something called the NFVI, the NFV Infrastructure Platform, which includes the hardware and the codification layer and a bit of management, and basically you need a, you need a resource manager for, 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 the, for these VNFs, the virtual network functions, and the question is, what is that resource manager going to be? And of course, you know, because a lot of NFV is about being open, that's why we have our open program, they're more and more going and saying, hey, I want to use OpenStack. Why wouldn't they want to use OpenStack? For two reasons. A, they want an open platform because you know, open source is the, the new open APIs. And B, they want to do the same thing they do in enterprise, right? The telco is an enterprise too. They don't want to have separate systems. And so the opportunity for OpenStack is to be that cloud management layer, which by the way, this is billions of dollars. This is not like pocket chains. And OpenStack is actually now the default to do that. It is. Uh, the question is who is going to provide, you know, carrier grade capabilities. As you saw, we made an announcement with Renewable around that. So we feel very good about Helion being sort of ending up being that platform of choice. Okay, so let's talk about HP now, internally. So um, the cloud group had a uh, progression, right? We saw that. Um, when Beery was working on it, he, you know, was you know, basically rubbing the sticks together, making it happen. You took it over, you built it out, you had to go get some funding. You went to Meg and you said, okay, we got to do this. You got behind it, it bolted up, Fink came in, now Martin's running it, um, things in place, you've got operational, sales for everything's built out, or building out fast. NFB, similar track, is it the same progression? Are you going to build you know, a team around it? Is it across Pan HP? Is, what's the What's the build out? What's the progression for uh, the business unit? Well, you know, we have it all planned out down to the T, right? Like <laughs> always, like we did in the cloud. Um, you know, cloud's about agility. But no, I mean, NFV is some of that, but it's not a one for one. It's some of that in the sense that there's a kernel, and then you build around that kernel across HP with budget, right? Because I'm not going to replicate things. If I need a server that's super thing, I'm going to go to Antonio and get that and just give them some money so I get what I want. If I want carry great inside Helion, I'm not going to build my own OpenStack team. I'm going to go work with help and work with those guys. Yeah. I'm not still in the cloud also, but Mark and Toronto and say, look, here's X million dollars, go build this. 
right? We'll work on this together. However, the other part of NFV is, is NFV is also sort of a vertical view for service providers for HP. So it's a broader thing. There are similarities in terms of how we built technology, but it's a bit broader because it's more and more the sort of the, 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 the service provider, the carrier lens from within HP so, that we serve as. So, so it's basically, you could, I mean, some people actually stripe that as a vertical and say, hey, we have a telco team to go after it and vertically integrate it. Well, you're saying, That's an interesting way to look at it. So, you know, of course, yeah, you can staff against it, but here's the conflict you just brought up, which is, okay, I'm then going to replicate concurrent processes and functions that will overlay against another group, say Helium. For instance, if NFD is going to be part of Helium, why no, would I you want to reinvent that? No, you just said that. No, no, said. no, I won't, re I won't replicate it. What I'm saying is... You said you won't replicate I it. I set up a technology, right, a solution, right? We're providing solutions. I set up an architecture and a solution. Some of that solution will come from my partners, right? Because and, and it could be multiple partners, right? It could come from the NEPS, it could come from Nokia, it could come from Ericsson, the VNFs. Like we're not going to be the big builders of the VNFs. It could come from Alcatel, it could come from startups. Some of that solution will come from within HP that I will fund, but not from my business. It could be from CMS, it could be the NFP yeah. director, Helion as well. But I will set the agenda for it, and the way I will set the agenda for it is a budget, and Meg is going to give me a budget to go drive that. Now, a vertical is more about an approach. Okay, who at HP is, is thinking and saying, okay, what should we, how should we approach the telcos on HP? But even there, I'll be leveraging existing teams. I'm not going to build a whole new team. Yeah, now, I do it. have an NFP, I do have an overlay sales force to drive that with a sales team. Yeah, got it. So you're going to pick and match, mix and match. You're going to set the architecture, set the agenda, set the architecture, and then fill in the gaps. With and also for customers, be the one throw the choke, which is always the most important thing. That's what we build Helium. If a customer, if there's an NFV customer for HP, he wants to know there's one place. He doesn't want to go looking for different business units, right? Yeah, so yeah. I serve as that person for them to go and choke. Yeah, makes sense. Beautiful. Well, Sarah, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I know you're super busy. You squeeze us in during our lunch break. Um, so uh, again, no breaks today for David John, but uh, hey, we're That's happy fine. to have you. Um, <laughs> Cube alum, great to have you on, uh, Sharon. Just give us the quick two cents, fi final word, I'll give you the final word. Um, what's the show all about this year? You can summarize for the folks watching at home. What's going on here in Europe? What's the theme? What's the big well, I think, to do? I think as Meg showed, right, and I think you guys saw, right, the innovation, the innovation engine's live and well here at HP. Like, whether it's in storage, and PCs, and Helion, and networking and software and innovation engine as well in the life at HP and I think that's beautiful for some of us who've been here for a few years doing, during the harder times, that's great to see. It's really, really fun to see. Sargalai, currently the COO of HP Cloud and SVP and general manager of the NFB business unit. I'm sure that will evolve and change. Uh, Sar, great to see you on theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante.